We have looked before at a couple of ways to tell whether a relation is linear. If it is graphed like this, and it is a straight line, then you know it is linear because it has a line in it. That makes sense. Okay. What if it looks like this? Is that a straight line? No. Of course not. So it is nonlinear, not a line. Okay. Well, that's easy enough if you can look at the graph. Uh, what about if I just give you an equation? Well, a linear equation will usually look something like this. y equals kx or y equals mx plus b. Those are the two we've looked at. And usually k, m, and b have some sort of number. So y equals 2x or y equals 3x minus 1, something like that. That will end up giving you a linear equation. And how can I tell for sure? <coughs> well, we've looked before at how to graph a linear equation just looking at the formula. So if I give you a formula like this, y equals 2x plus 1, how can I graph that and tell whether it's linear? Well, I can create a table of values. So I choose some random numbers, usually something like 0, 1, and 2, and I'm going to substitute those into the equation. So 2 times 0 plus 1 is 1. 2 times 1 plus 1 is 3. 2 times 2 plus 1 is 5. And I can graph those points 0, 1, 1, 3, and 2, 5. Can a straight line be drawn through those? Without even doing it, you can probably tell yes, and of course you can. So is it linear? Yes. That was quite a long process if you actually have to draw the graph. And what I'd like to show you today is how to do all of this without actually drawing the graph. We're going to leave our table of values there because the table of values is actually how we're going to solve this. But what we're going to do is we're going to add another column. And this column is called first differences. So I'll just shorten that to first diff. And all first differences is telling me is what are the differences between y values. So what is the difference between 1 and 3? Well, 2. And what's the difference between 3 and 5? You don't have to do these arrows, but just to show you, the difference is 2. Notice that in both cases, the answer is 2. That also tells you that it is a linear relation because, and here's the rule you need to learn, the first difference is if the first difference is if the first differences are all the same, the relation is linear. So you can probably guess if the first differences are not all the same that it is not linear. And we can prove that this will all be the same. Let's create an even bigger table of values. 3, 4, substitute the 3 in. 2 times 3 is 6, plus 1 is 7. 2 times 4 plus 1 is 9. And what are the first differences there? The difference between 5 and 7? 2. The difference between 7 and 9? 2. I think you can see a pattern here, right? So let's try one the let's try another one and see whether this always works. Okay. So let's try y equals x squared minus 1. Is this linear or not? Well again, if we wanted to graph it, we have, we have to create a table of values. But we're going to try to do it without the graph. So let's create some random values again. 0, 1, and 2. 0 squared is just 0 times 0 equals 0. Minus 1 is negative 1. 1 squared is 1. Minus 1 is 0. 2 squared is equal, let's see, y equals 2 squared minus 1, which equals 4 minus 1, which is 3. So there I have my beginnings of a table of values. Uh, maybe let's just add one more value so we have enough first differences here. Let's say 3. 3 squared is 9, minus 1 is 8. So let's add our first differences column. The difference between negative 1 and 0 is 1. 
between 0 and 3 is 3, and between 3 and 8 is 5. Are those numbers all the same? No. So is it linear? No. Non-linear, because the numbers are not all the same. And just to prove it, let's graph it. So let's say 0, negative 1, 1, 0, 2, 3, and 3, 8 be up here. You can already tell this is not a straight line. It's going to be more of a curve. So that is non-linear and the graph proves it. But using first differences we didn't even have to actually draw the graph. So this is kind of a shortcut, a shortcut to save us time sometimes when we don't have time to draw a graph. If we just create a table of values using our relation and if the first differences of that table of values are all the same, you know it's linear. So first differences is very useful in helping us to determine whether a relation is linear or not. Okay, so let's say we figured out that it is linear. So we've done some, we've done a table of values for 2x plus 1, let's say, and we found that it is linear. So let's just double the check to see whether that's true. 0, 1, 2, 3. 0 times 2 is 0 plus 1 is 1. 1 times 2 is 2 plus 1 is 3. We have 5. 3 times 2 is 6 plus 1 is 7. So the first difference is here. Change colors. The first differences are going to be 2, 2, and 2. First differences are all the same. The relationship, the relation is linear. You may notice that the number that is here is 2, which also happens to be the coefficient of the x, which you also know as, in this form, y equals mx plus b, the slope. So the second important thing about first differences is that the first difference is actually the slope. So you can find the slope doing this as well. So we'll add that to your definition. The first difference in a linear relation is equal to the slope, or we can also call that m. Now, one thing you got to be careful of is when you use first differences, you must always use numbers that are consecutive, like 0, 1, 2, 3, they're next to each other. Each one of these is one apart, right? If you said, let's say you did 0, 1, 3, uh, 4, those aren't consecutive, that won't, wouldn't work. You must do them in a row. You can do uh, something like 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, because they're an equal distance apart. So whenever you do first differences, you must make sure that your x values that you're creating are uh, are kind of irregular intervals apart, otherwise it messes it up. Uh, so as long as they're regular intervals apart and the first differences are all equal, then your first difference will be equal to the slope. And that might also be a much easier way to figure out slope than, say for instance, graphing it and then taking the difference between the points, which we have done, which we can do. I mean, you can graph this 0, 1, 1, 3, um, 2, 5, and remember, to get slope, we only need to use two points. And so we could go, you know, slope, slope equals the, um, the rise over the run. And so the rise from this point to this point is 2, and the run is 1. So that's going to equal 2 over 1, which equals 2. And so you find the slope is 2. Uh, but without graphing it, uh, we, we can just look at the first differences and find the exact same thing. The slope equals 2.